Welcome back. In an earlier video, I mentioned I had an interesting project to work on, which happened to be this Victor Victrola from 1913. And I mentioned the problem with it was is that when you cranked it on the side over here, it doesn't do anything. And in fact, that's the case. Maybe if I can get close. You just hear that, you hear clicking, but you should hear like a ratcheting almost, and you should have some kind of tension. And the more you turn it, the uh, harder the tension gets. And then eventually it gets to the point where it's wound, and then you can disengage a brake. It spins. You would take the sound box tone arm assembly here and then lower the needle down onto the record and open the horn doors in the front down here which there are two of, and you would get sound. Simple. And obviously when you're done, you would just engage the brake and that would stop, or you would just keep playing records until the springs wore, wore out. And as you can guess, yes, there is springs in there. It's just like winding a clock. Uh, in the other video, I you know, kind of briefly went over some things. I, just, I did some brief research on it and now that I've had this for a little while, I've, I've done further research, and I can point out now that yes, this is the the sound box right here. This is where the needle assembly goes. Um, the needles have to be replaced every record, every single time. You put a new, you put a record here, you put a new needle in, you play the record, it's done. You chuck the needle. Um, that's just the way it is. And then the sound comes through here, and then gets amplified through the sound box down there through acoustics. Uh, when I actually got this originally, um, I'll show you by just swinging this out the way and lifting the platter off. There's the automatic brake over here. Part of this was actually swiveled like way over this way, which was incorrect. It does actually need to stick out. Now there's actually a piece on the tone arm here that's supposed to come down and engage this little lever piece right here. Perhaps I can zoom in on that a little bit and show you. This lever here and then on the tone arm there's a little uh, nipple here that comes down. There's actually a rod that would screw in and screw out. When you screw it down, it would engage that. And you would manipulate this by this little stubby lever right here. And then also, I found out through Google image searching that there's a, a spring that belongs here and here. And that spring gives you a little tension on this uh, brake because otherwise it just flaps in the breeze here. So the scope of this particular video today is going to be taking out the motor and finding out what's going on with it. Now I'll give you a little bit of data on this. This is, like I said, a Victor Victrola. This is model VV-XI. There's no suffixes after that. It's serial number 57627 with a one way out past that. And I'm not sure what that number means, but uh, according to a chart I found, model numbers with uh, this VV-XI and a serial number from 22,000 to 66,000 were made in 1913. And according to a sticker I found on the back, like way back down over here, it actually gives you the date. And I think it has the month and year, but unfortunately it was tore and all I have is the year. So it was 1913 for sure. And um, one of the other indicators is there's a dial indicator down here for speed. And after a certain point, they change this design to another one. And there's ones before, ones after it. So that's another way you can tell for dating. And we'll have to um, see if this thing works too. But like I said, the scope is, is gonna be removing this box here and finding out what's going on. Now, I already removed the four screws and I noticed there's a knob here that you use to pick this up and there should be another knob over here and it's missing. Now there's also a missing knob in the front down at the very bottom here with the sound boxes or I should say the, the doors for the horn. And I did find that way deep inside the horn with the screw. So that's good, I can reattach that. But that might actually belong up, up here, I'm not really sure. Uh, also, what I have to do is remove the crank and you go, counterclockwise with the crank and it pulls right out and that should allow us to remove this now hopefully I can hold that out the way and then maybe just lift this motor right out it's, it's quite heavy okay oh that's cool we can see inside the sound box here's the motor 
and uh, it doesn't look horrible. Let's see if maybe I can manipulate this right back into here. Oh, that might not work. Let me see. There's a diagram in here, which is kind of cool. Now, I've done a lot of research on these. Uh, I've had this for a little longer than I wanted to. Unfortunately, scheduling just didn't allow me to get to this the way I wanted to. It seemed like the weekends I've got a chance to get to it, I really couldn't get to it. And uh, the guy called me the other day and asked me if I had any progress on it. And I told him I did, which wasn't entirely a, a lie. I didn't have the kind of progress I wanted to have. I just, uh, I had progress in the research. I did quite a bit of reading up on this and looking at diagrams and studying stuff because that's just how I have to do this. And uh, it seems that this is a two spring model, it looks like. There's a spring in here and a spring in here. And the way I understand this, when you turn the crank, what happens is, is the springs turn, aha, uh -huh. This is a clear, hmm. The springs here turn, and what happens is one gets tight to the point where it starts to tighten the other one. Like one's in here clockwise, one's counterclockwise. So one, I guess, would spin freely and the other one doesn't. And they, they wind up, one winds up the other one and then they kind of feed off each other. And then there's a governor down here which uh, causes this thing to spin at a fixed speed. And obviously when you adjust the knob over here, this would uh, change the damper. I don't know if I can get a close up on this here. This was the only way it would fit in here. Now this damper uh, down here moves in and out with this plate. There's a little needle down here. So uh, this isn't something I can actually work on in the house because it is quite greasy. And uh, from what I understand, some of the symptoms could include broken springs, which are in here, like I said, solidified lubricants, where we'd be able to see that all around here. It actually looks pretty good. Now, I understand 10 years ago, somebody looked at this, but they couldn't figure out why it wasn't going. And um, it was left at that. So it does look like they gave it a cleaning, which is good for me. That's one thing I might not have to do, but I don't know what this looks like inside. Uh, there also could be a damaged governor. Well, that's like I said, that's over here. We can take a look at that and try to figure out what's up with that. And then worn or damaged parts or missing parts. Well, it doesn't look like anything's missing. I have to get a close up of this diagram over here and see what we can see in that. That would be a good way to start. Now, here's the, the crank mechanisms back here. I'm gonna have to reorient the camera, but that's over here and we can see with that connects to uh, the cam system all that's located in here a couple uh different things were saying how you can tell what kind of motor this was as if this spindle bracket here is bolted on or not and this one is let me uh turn this a little bit and i'll be right there yeah that's a lot better all right so yeah it's uh it's an interesting design. Like I said, the crank is, is up here. As you turn this, you cause the motor to turn. And then that outer uh, gear causes the spindles to spin and the uh, platter is at the very opposite end of that spindle. And then the governor here also turns off that. So the governor's given resistance to the whole thing. And this out here is the actual speed control. So as you turn the knob, which is of course on the other side of this, it's like a ramp effect that causes this to come in and out and adjust the little um, disc over here. It's a very interesting design. And uh, you know, like I said, they don't make them like this anymore, obviously. It's all electric, but it's interesting. It's definitely uh, a, a cool device. So this is gonna be part one of this video. Part two is uh, when I'm gonna get the chance to bring this out to the shed and uh, you know, really take a good look at this. As you can see, just from handling it, my hands are a little greasy. I don't care about the greasy hands. It's just, I don't wanna go and touch something else after this and have greasy hands. That's the issue. So when I get out to the shed, obviously it's all, it's all uh, 
dirty out there anyway, so who cares? That's my actual, that's the, the dirty shop. This is my uh, electronic shop. I just don't have a safe place to keep this outside. In fact, this was out in the living room because I don't really have room in this particular room. Uh, my camera's on a tripod, and when I'm done with the camera, it swivels over to the spot this is sitting in, so kind of have the camera floating in the middle of my room here. But at any rate, that's here, neither here nor there. It's going to be interesting um, checking this out. Now, I don't know why this is this is loose. This is um, an indicator to me, at least, that the inner spring is uh, not engaged to the spindle inside here. I would think it would have resistance on it like this one does. So that could be a clear indication of what's going on here. I don't know. I, that's something I haven't come across in any of the literature I've read up on. Uh, this spring here does seem like it's tight but then again you're winding what's inside of it so again this one's spinning I'm not sure what that story is uh, they do move with this cam so perhaps what I'll do is, is uh, take a look at what's going on up here I should actually get this out of this thing altogether um, what they do online what I've saw is they take a box and they just set this over the top of a cardboard box and that actually is a really good idea so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and implement something like that. Um, I am going to clean up first. I don't have any of my blue nitrile gloves in here either, unfortunately. So really, I can't add more to this video tonight. So I'm going to thank you for watching. Um, if you want to see more about this particular build and you're not one of my subscribers, you know, subscribe because that way you can get, you know, to see the rest of them. Uh, I do intend on having the next uh, video up on this soon. I'm gonna, it's uh, actually Wednesday night right now. This is gonna be the video for my Thursday upload. And that gives me a, a four day weekend. This is actually a July 4th weekend coming up, which is cool. But I will have time to work on this. I'll take it out. I'm actually off all, th all three days for my regular job. I'll have plenty of time to work on this thing and I wanna get this back to the guy's hand. Hopefully the springs inside are still good. I doubt it um, they may have been replaced originally and it's just something else externally going on we'll find out once we get this off anyway guys thanks for watching have a good day see you next video